Yeah, yeah. You ever sit on a beach and just watch the waves come in and they're all the same size? And then a big wave comes in after that? That's, yeah, yeah. That's the big wave right there. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by MKBHD Marquez Brownlee. He's YouTube's tech shaman, the Shorty Awards creator of the decade, one of the most popular reviewers on the internet for good reason. But how does he handle his death wings? We'll find out today, Marquez. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And I know that this is a long time coming, but before we get started, I do have to ask, how are you a spicy food? I think I'm average. I don't really think I'm way better than average or really bad at this. I think we'll find out though. We will find out today. You ready to get it going? Let's do it. Kind of. That's a kick. That's that's hot sauce. <laughs> it's not just sauce. It's hot sauce. All right, we're in there. So you've built a YouTube channel off of schooling the masses on what's new and popping in the world of tech. So I think that it's only fair that we give the people the Marquez Brownlee gift guide for 2018 on Wing One. Hmm. Let's say I have $300 to spend on headphones. First, do I even need to spend $300 on headphones? And if that's my budget, what should I get? 300 bucks is a nice little. It's a nice little price range for something like headphones because you're definitely serious about it. But with 300 bucks, you start to get into like discerning difference between like a Sennheiser over ear versus an open back. You get different styles, wireless, wired. Uh, a personal favorite of mine is Audio Technica's M50s, and they're way under 300 bucks. I can already recommend those. Those are like 160, 170. There's a lot of different things you can do at that price, so that's a good place to shop. Have you ever used the phrase, thank God I was wearing my Google glasses? <laughs> no, never, never once. I actually, that was a weird time. So I like actually tried to use them walking around the street and just never once was it something I was super happy to have on. If you could steal one item out of Casey Neistat's studio, what would you grab? Oh, wow. <clears throat> That's a good question. He's got a lot of stuff in there. He's got drones, he's got cameras, he's got lenses but I would probably take something like the one wheel or some ridiculous electric transportation that I don't have yet that I want to try, but I'd take some lessons with it because there's no way I'd be good on it. And then one of the great barroom takes of our era is that porn is the real driver of innovation when it comes to technology. Yeah. Is that true in your opinion? Have you ever given the matter any thought? I think it's true. I know for a fact Google is the number one most viewed website. I know YouTube is the second most popular website. Facebook, I think, just... Or Reddit just passed Facebook as number three. But I'm sure as far as like volume, there's a couple porn sites that do major traffic and have major influence over what people do with their online time. So they are big drivers. Naughty America or Bang Bros? Oh man, I have no <laughs> Bang Bros. Just <laughs> sounds better. JK, everyone knows it's Brazzers. You ready to move on, Marquez? Let's do it. That one I could do every day. I like that one. I like the label too, that's clean. Black and white. Dom, I'm giving him a bottle. I know yeah. you hate it, I'm giving it a bottle. Put it in the bag. So tech news usually stays with the Maven crowd, but nothing seems to really bubble up in the pop culture space quite like Apple product announcements. What confuses you, what annoys you when non-tech people cover Apple? I mean, Apple's probably the most popular company out there, so there's a lot of people who just kind of peripherally are aware of how massive they are. And with that, you always get people who ignore the tech and just focus on the fact that people are big Apple fans. They'll call you an Apple fanboy. They'll say you're a mindless sheep. If you like Apple at all, no matter what your reasoning, someone's gonna say that. <laughs> I think some people are mindlessly just getting the next iPhone just because it's the next iPhone, but uh, as someone who actually likes to put thought into an analysis of products, it's kind of weird to get that from people. What's the worst Apple take that you've ever heard from a civilian on the street? They just react strongly to change. So when Apple does anything, whether it's removing the headphone jack or having a notch at the top of the screen, they just hate it. There's plenty of things they've done that I thought were great that people just hated because it was different, but it's mostly just a, just a reaction to it being different.
So I was watching a video of you on Instagram playing Ultimate Frisbee, and I don't know what my expectations were exactly, but it wildly exceeded my expectations. That's that's a great compliment. I'm doing my job then. Wow. Chill, chill, chill. Yeah, be cool, be cool, be cool. Oh, wow. I went to Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey, where the sport was invented in 1968. So that's where the first games were played. I think a friend or two just said, hey, come out to a practice. You might like it. And I haven't stopped playing since. What's the most disrespectful move that you can pull on the ultimate pitch? Like, is there any posterization equivalent? <laughs> there is. It's the Vince Carter. It's, it's jumping over somebody. It doesn't happen that much. I can say I have done it. Unfortunately, it wasn't on video. There is a photo version of it. Feel it. All right. We're in there. <laughs> Son of zombie. So it's like not the zombie apocalypse. I remember that from previous seasons. All right. Son of zombie. It's definitely a sleeper. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous because a lot of these feel tame and I take <laughs> big bites and then I don't know what's about to hit me. How is it that all these YouTubers seem to be able to impulse buy Teslas and I'm in the back of a lift just scraping the cushions for <laughs> spare change? Man, Tesla's a fun company. That's been a dream car of mine for so long. and I've been saving up for it for so many years. Since the, the curse that is a test drive, there wasn't any stopping me once I was able to. <clears throat> but uh, I think it's just a it's just a great all-around car. I don't know. Something about it is just really appealing, and it's just attractive, and I love it. And then the cult of the Tesla has really grown in recent years. Can you give me the layman's explanation for why the Tesla is such a big deal? Well, the car itself is great. It starts with that. If it wasn't a great car, it wouldn't hold up. And then there's this hype around like all these features. You get in it, it looks like a spaceship. It's the fastest car on the street. It just kind of hypes up its reputation. It's a little burn right now. Um, once you get in it and you get floored zero to 60 or you hear it silent, it lives up to it. So I think just the fact that it's actually a great product is the core part of that. What's your response to Trick Daddy, who says that you can't trust a self-driving car because, as he puts it, all computers malfunction? Yeah, you know what? He's got a point. It's been a whole thing lately about just people getting really worked up, understandably, about self-driving cars crashing. It'll happen. But the fact that the computer is less likely to crash than a human is a great place to start. So I would say to him, give it a chance. You might be impressed with its obstacle avoidance or its super fast reaction times in a way that you might not find in a human. So this next one is the Los Calientes. This mm -hmm. is one of the hot one sauces. Marquez, we sent you some hot sauce. Yeah. Because, you know, we appreciate the love. And you were kind enough. Sorry, I'm gonna show this down first. You were generous enough to rate the Hot Ones Fiery Chipotle 8 out of 10. This is our new one, the Los Calientes. Do you think it stacks up? I'm in a spot right now where I like this more than the old one. Spice is cool, but it's the flavor. We're calling it the sauce of the summer. All right, Marquez, as you know, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll bust out the laptop, I'll show you the picture, then you just tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Sounds great. All right, Steven, laptop, please. Laptop and pedestal. And pedestal. <laughs> All right, first things first, you and NDT. <laughs> yeah. And he's been in the hot seat. Oh, I love that video. That was an amazing episode. This particular one, he's pointing at the pie on my shirt because he was slightly bothered that my shirt had a bunch of different multiplication and division and signs and things like that, but pie didn't really belong. But I justified it to him. I was like, you know, it's a beautiful mathematical symbol, so leave it alone. But I know more digits of pi than him. That's on my resume. Little foreshadowing. We'll be putting that to the test a little bit later. Oh, wow. Speaking of things worth the price, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the air mags. Not those. Those are not <laughs> worth the price. Those are ridiculous. If I'm reviewing, like, sh footwear, I'm never recommending those, ever. What do you remember about them? They're heavy. Very heavy. Uh, they've got these big batteries and big lights. That's the thing about these shoes is people don't know. Like, they look cool. They've got lights in them and they're self-lacing. But you need batteries and motors and lights and all those things are heavy. And they're clunking around in these shoes and they look dope. And you get a picture with them and they're awesome. But they're not, uh, they're not daily driver material. This one's got like a, a red hue to it.
Mhm. 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 Ja. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You ever sit on a beach and just watch the waves come in and they're all the same size? And then a big wave comes in after that? That's. Yeah, yeah. That's the big wave right there. It's coming. It's coming. Cool. When's the last time you got super angry or annoyed by a gadget? The last time you just wanted to gronk spike whatever you were holding? <clears throat> uh, it was probably yesterday or something. Technically speaking, you write the code and it should work. And when it doesn't work, it's confusing and frustrating. Whenever software doesn't work, it just bugs me. Well, if that bugs you, here's what I want to do. I want to give you some of the things that bug me. And okay. I want you to tell me if I'm justified in my rage or if I'm just being a big baby about the whole thing, okay? okay? Apple losing the headphone jack. Is that just something that was destined to happen? Or is this just another example of them playing God with their customers? Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, I feel like you're okay to be mad about that. I think everyone is. Apple's justification is we want to move toward this wireless future. And in order to get rid of all these ports on the iPhone and make it truly wireless, we got to get rid of the headphone jack. Eventually, we're going to have to get rid of the data port, the charging. They took step one, and people got pretty pissed. And I'm not surprised at all. How come we can put a rover on Mars, but I can't get decent Wi-Fi on a Delta flight? I think about that every day. Right? <sighs> That's the most fr <laughs> Speaking of being frustrated, <laughs> slow Wi-Fi is so much worse than no Wi-Fi. And then they have the balls to charge like $36 or yeah. like 45 bucks or whatever on one flight, you know? Silly. The amount of money they make off people who don't actually get anything for it is crazy. What's your elevator pitch for why we should be allowed to edit our tweets? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, we should be able to edit our tweets because we're human. We make mistakes. So just for like 30 seconds after I tweet, just let me... And you get that reply that says, hey, you spelled that wrong. Let me just add the apostrophe. Let me just add that extra letter I forgot. I'm not going to change it to make it a completely different thing. If I do, you'll see the edit history, and you'll know. So yeah, uh, we should be able to edit tweets. Oh, I'm sweating. Let's say 16 out of 10 heat. Label these work. So as Hot Ones fans know, we have an unhealthy obsession in what our guests eat, so I have to ask you about the industrial-sized boxes of Honey Nut Cheerios that I see lurking in your videos. Yeah. Can you explain your love for Cheerios for me? I was doing videos in college. And there's this thing about cameras where you set your shutter speed, and sometimes there's a little flicker. Maybe a microwave behind you in your college dorm has a display that kind of blinks in a weird way. So that was happening, and it was behind me, and after a couple of videos in a row in front of that microwave, there's some comments about it. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> so I, I took something from my box of Cheerios, just put it in front of the microwave to, so no people won't comment about that anymore. Get back to the content of the video, you know? Mm -hmm. But people who found the videos after that point didn't know why I put them there, didn't know why they were behind me, didn't know about the microwave, and they assumed a love for Cheerios, which I have not denied to this day yet but whew, that's how it happened. Well, I know that Cheerios, it's goat status for you, but what I wanna do is show you some other titans of the breakfast aisle, and I just want you to rank these cereals yep. from best to most trash. Corn yeah. Pops, Apple Jacks, Cocoa Krispies, Frosted Flakes, and Fruit Loops. I have a feeling this is gonna make some people mad. It always does. Like unjustifiably. But this is a clear number one. Apple Jacks at so, number one. Apple Jacks at number one. I'm gonna go Frosted Flakes number two. I'm gonna go Fruit Loops three. And then I'm gonna go Cocoa Krispies followed by Pops. As a tech dude, have you ever thought about just drinking soy lint for efficiency? I tried it. Really? Yeah. So technically I have thought about it. It was trash. It tastes so bad. It bad. tastes like it sounds. Soy, soy lint. lint. Yeah. Just. Not good. All right, Marquez. <clears throat> oh, we've arrived. We've arrived. Yeah, great. <sighs> no place to hide. <laughs> Give me that.
Yeah, all right. <clears throat> so through doing this show, I've been exposed to this whole world of insufferable hot sauce snobs. So I can only imagine what you must go through dealing with these tech geeks all the time. <clears throat> When you look at the comments on the videos or the things that get tweeted at you, what are the things that make you wish that maybe you reviewed breakfast cereals rather than smartphones? <sighs> That's a great question. Um, I like that I review something that people use all the time. Tech is a part of your life, you know? So, uh, on one hand, People make a purchase and they want to justify it and they will at all costs, no matter what. I bought this iPhone, I spent a thousand bucks on it. You can't tell me this isn't the best phone. And then I come along and tell them about another phone that's better and they don't want to hear it. So I get that. It's frustrating, but I get it. <clears throat> wow. But yeah, that's a thing. What about locking horns with celebrities? What's the story behind how Gal Gadot blocked you on Twitter? <laughs> I'd like to think it was personally her, but that's a fun story. She's sp sponsored by Huawei, basically, her whole Twitter feed. <clears throat> <clears throat> One day in an Uber, I noticed uh, she's tweeting from an iPhone. I thought it was funny. Took a screenshot of it, tweeted it. <sighs> Soon I was getting some emails and calls from people she works with. How'd you find this? How'd you know? Look, well, it's public, like you can just look and see. <clears throat> uh, but I, <clears throat> wow. I think at that point I followed her because I wasn't following her. Someone just like told me to look at it. So I followed her. A couple days later, someone sends me a, a tweet like, hey, she tweeted from an Android phone. I'm like, oh, really? And I go to check and I'm blocked and I can't see any of it. So. Clearly they don't want me snooping anymore. Oh, wow. That is not a good label. As long as I'm here, I'm gonna review something and it's the labels on these bottles and they just got really bad with this last one. You know, I don't wanna put you on the spot or whatever, but could you rank them up for us? Like, can you change the order or something? Of the labels. Based on labels. Yeah, this is the best label. Just the best bottle. Heartbeat. Heartbeat number one. Black label, number two. It's another clean label. This looks like something you'd find on a less painful thing. So that's number three. Then I'm gonna go, uh, this Hot Ones Los Summary. Los Calientes. It's, I, I gotta admit, it is Summary. That's what we're going for. And then I'm gonna pull right up with uh, Pirate's Lantern. The last dab's got a nice label. There you go. Then we'll go Howler Monkey. I'm going the bomb. With as much pain as it's caused me today. I'm gonna go zombie apocalypse because it's got a novelty factor at least. Yeah, yeah. But this reflective garbage <laughs> font has got to go in last place. Well, let's hope that the wing's better than the label. <sighs> Can't really get worse, I guess. All right. You went to the Stevens Institute of Technology, and at the time, you'd had the YouTube notoriety that you have now. What was the best and worst thing about being internet famous as a college student? The worst thing was a professor that asked me to be a guest for my own class. It was a social media class, by the way, so it made sense. I was really just, no, please, I don't want to do that. But I did it. <clears throat> Uh, but the best part of it was actually, like, right after college when everyone's, you know, doing the job search thing, I was lucky enough to be in a position where I kind of knew that this is what I could do full-time. And so I just dedicated full steam ahead to that. There it is. There it is. All right, Marquez. Mm-hmm. This is the last dab redux. As you know, it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. You I don't see. have to if you don't want to. I don't want to. But here we are. There yeah. it is. Textbook. All right.
feeling it. <laughs> <clears throat> That's good stuff. All right, Marquez, here we are at the Scoville finish line, and what we're gonna be doing is a throw the kitchen sink at him, decathlon style wing 10 challenge. All right. While your head's about to explode like a damn volcano. Quick, how many digits in pi can you recite off the top of your head right now? All right, three point. Does the first one count? Three point one four one five nine two six five three five. And I think it's like eight. I'll, I'll end there, I'll end there. I it think might that's... be right, it might be wrong. We'll double check it in post. But our next question <clears throat> comes from YouTube. It yep. comes from YouTuber KCN. <clears throat> KCN. Got it. Who wanted us to focus on your squeaky voice in early videos. His question, <laughs> what was it like to go through puberty on camera? Man. <laughs> you right, Casey. Uh, my, I, the best, the best comment I ever heard about that was that I sound like Elmo in my first video. And I really do sound like Elmo in my first video. So don't go watch that. And then last but not least, certainly not least, would you mind busting out your camera and taking a picture of this still life known as the Hot Ones Aftermath and then talking through your creative process in as much detail as possible? Look, I'm gonna, I'm a fan of shallow depth of field. It's something you usually get with DSLRs, but if we feature this Hot Ones sauce right in the middle, you got a pretty sweet lighting setup going already. I don't have to do much work. Whew. If you wanna minimize the depth of field, you wanna get the subject as close to the camera as possible and the background as far away. Should and I move they, these back for you? You kinda end up, yeah, if you wanna back these up, with the, the cap is off of the last dab, so you end up with a, a sort of a live action. <clears throat> oh boy. The milk, we don't need that, it's not as pretty. But I'll end up with uh, a little, if you wanna give a thumbs up in the background, That's pretty solid. It is beautiful with the power of post. Let's put it on the screen. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. This camera, this camera, or this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Look, I just wanna talk tech with people who are interested. So if you, you're trying to buy something, you need a recommendation, I'll try to do my best with that. Uh, I'll review tech on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash mkbhd. Or those five letters anywhere, Instagram, Twitter. Whew, thanks for watching. That was so good. Wait, can we do that napkin thing again for the yeah, camera? Yeah, for the yeah, yeah. Video, yeah. Aloha, Spice Lords. If you're wondering why I'm sitting on this beautiful beach, it's because I'm celebrating Los Calientes, the sauce of summer and the newest addition to the Hot Ones Hot Sauce family. This is Beach Vibes in a Bottle. Sweet, smoky, spicy. And I might be biased, but I think it's the best hot sauce we've ever made. And here's the exciting news. If you wanna pick up a bottle, it's available now. You know the drill, heatness.com, heatness.com for your bottle of Los Calientes. Los Calientes, muy delicioso.